Welcome to Specific Love. Today I'm going to show you how I made an awesome prize wheel. Let's begin. Now to make the spinning wheel, I do need a way to cut a circle. And it needs to be a pretty accurate circle so it doesn't wobble real bad when you're actually spinning it. So to do that, I need to make a simple jig that I'm going to use on the bandsaw. So let's get doing that. Now I've cut this big piece of wood out here. It is a quarter inch plywood that is just slightly larger than the plate that comes on this bandsaw so that it can accompany the size uh, wheel that we need. Now to make sure it'll slide in initially straight, I had to cut another piece of wood that I'm gonna have to fine tune so that it fits in this groove. It needs to be a little bit thinner than this is tall so it doesn't run on the bottom, but it does need to fit side to side. So let me trim that down. Now that I have this trimmed down so it fits nice in the slot, I need to attach it to the bottom of this board. But there is a blade in the way, and I don't want to disconnect this whole plate or disconnect a blade to get this correct. So I'm going to do it a little bit cheating, but I'm going to take a popsicle stick in here that'll raise this piece up just a little bit. Then I'm going to take the board, set it on the top, and then get a nice straight edge and line it against the back of this plate. And that will allow this board to be exactly where I want it. Then I'm going to glue it all in place. Now when the jig is drying, I'm going to try and start the base. Now all you need is some type of a 1 by material, it could be 1 by 4, 1 by 3, whatever you'd like. I've actually had some I'd cut down in a previous project and I'm just going to use this. It's roughly 3 quarters of an inch by 1 inch, so I'll start cutting these into sizes. Now I'm going to connect these real simplistically just to make a little eye and then a piece coming up. Now to give this a little bit of strength I'm just going to do a real basic lap joint between the two pieces here, the one in the middle and the one that goes up. So let's do that on the table saw. All right, and there's a basic half lap at the bottom. Since I did a half lap on this main middle piece here, I figured it'd also be nice and strong to do it on the side pieces. So there we go, nice tight fit. Now I'm gonna put a little glue in there to so make sure it doesn't come apart. Now that we've given this some time to dry, we can unclamp it and get started on making a circle. But first I need to cut these ends off so I don't bump into them. Now for the wheel of this unit, we're gonna be using some marker board. The great thing about this, you can use a dry erase marker, you can ride on it and erase real easily. It's gonna be about a 16 inch circle, so we need to cut this and then do the circle. All right, to try and minimize any kind of tear out when I'm cutting this, I'm just put a strip of tape along here and hopefully that'll help. Now before I cut the circle, I need to take this jig I made earlier and we're going to cut a notch in here using the blade so that it's easier to get the circle started. Now I've only went about halfway through here with the hopes that as the circle is screwed in over here, that I can get it nice and started and everything will be lined up. Now to find the center of this square, I did a cross and I found it's right here. I'm gonna drill a hole through this top piece and into the bottom piece of wood. And the reason why is that's gonna allow me to put a screw and allow me to rotate it. Put some tape over the hole here, so hopefully it won't scratch this as we spin it. Now I've put a little mark here on the board that should line up with the screw. So as I scoot this board forward, it should be right in line. So make sure the blade gets right there and I can start cutting a circle.
There we go. Nice pretty circle. Now I'm going to use these original lines here. I know that they're at a 90 degree angle to each other. And so I'm going to use them to stretch out the line so I can find the spots for the pegs. Now that I have those 90 degree corners to find the center here, all I got to do is put the ruler right there on the end marks and then draw a little mark, flip around to the same on the other side and you got exactly half. Now that all the holes are drilled, I want to use some paint and mix the lines that go across. For a couple reasons. One, it limits you to the space you're in so you don't overwrite, and it just makes it a little bit easier to see who's the winner. Now before I applied the paint to the main circle, I did a little test here. I had a couple different kinds, and some of the paint, actually when you're using the dry erase marker, will be removed, and some of it will not. So make sure you do some testing on any of the paint you might be using. Now I've given this paint a few hours to fully cure just to make sure it doesn't accidentally get smudged or get wiped off. Now it's time to make some pegs and I'm going to do that just using a wooden dowel. Now while the glue is drying, I decided to jump back on the frame for just a moment and I made one more cut. This is about three inches long and it fits over the top. It's very simplistic. When I did the half laps and I did that with the table saw, I did the same process to make a little dado cut so that it'll fit right on the top here. Now in about the center of this top piece, we need to make a little cut right down the middle here so it goes about halfway so that we can put a little stopper. Now that we made this little cut, we need to create a little stopper that goes in. I'm just going to use, this is an ice cream pail, and I'm going to flip over. I'm going to cut out a nice little rectangle shape, and that should fit right in there. Now my piece of plastic does fit in this wood real snug. If for some reason it doesn't, you can always put a little super glue or something in there to wedge it to keep it nice and tight. Now if you don't have a piece of plastic that can fit in there, you might want to consider an old belt. Make sure it's a thin one, and you might have to even enlarge this cut just a little bit. But of course, just measure out the size and do the same process. Now depending on how tight you made this dado, it might just be in there snug, or you may have to put a little bit of glue. Now to assemble all this together, I need to make a hole in this center piece. And to do that, we first want to take this circle and line it up roughly where we want on it. And then it's good idea to try and take a pencil and do a little mark, and that way we can go and drill that hole. Now to get the spinning mechanism to work correctly, I've tried a number of different bolts and washers that I've seen online, and I've also seen another idea using a fidget spinner. I've tried all these over the last few days, and it seems that the fidget spinner is the winning choice. But I also cut out another piece so it wouldn't hurt the large circle that I made, and that way I could test this out. And I hot glued it in place and it seems to be the winner. So we're going to do this to the big wheel. Now the first step on the fidget spinner is to remove these outer bearings. We don't need them anyway. Plus it gives you an extra little area for the hot glue to stick. And then we want to remove these center caps just so that you can drill into them. Now that the fidget spinner is glued in place and I've drilled a hole through the top, I need a long bolt to fit through it. 
Now I did have to modify this bolt slightly because his head would not fit down in the center of this so I ground it down a little bit so that everything can now fit nice and flush. Now to glue this in place I do need to take a small piece of paper and slide it down in there because you want to make sure that the glue that's touching this bolt does not touch this backing or they'll be stuck together. Now that we've given time for the glue to fully cure, we want to slide it into place and then attach it on the other side with a large washer for bracing and a nut. When you plan on riding on this, it's a really good idea to brace it. I'm just gonna brace it down here on my hand, right down here at the base, because it's laying on its back. And that way it'll allow you to write whatever your prize is, or whatever your number is gonna be. And you don't have to worry about this breaking apart. Another little option is to take some of these surface protectors and put little feet on all four corners. And that way you don't have to worry about the surface you're putting it on. Now I love the simplicity of this, especially how it just looks and how easy it is to put together. And I hope you're able to build one of these too. Now if you enjoyed this, I also have some other videos right over here. Make sure you check those out. Otherwise, have fun building. Welcome to Specific Love, my wife. Don't do that. Circle, so we need to cut this and then try to use this. And this guy's falling off. Stay.